Hey everyone, my name is Keith Denardo. I'm a Eastern Connecticut Valley District Forester with the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, today we're going to be visiting Irving State Forest Headquarters to discuss the proposed forest management project that uh, is going to be focusing on the red pine removal in and around uh, this building you see in front of you, uh, as well as some that's located along the edge of Route 2A here in Irving, Massachusetts. Um, as you can see, there's a line of red pine up and beyond behind the buildings, as well as, well as some white pine mixed in there. And uh, quite a bit of regeneration that you can't see too much from right here, but we're going to take a walk through the woods in just a little bit and uh, take a look at uh, the marking and the project itself as it's been laid out. The project was originally proposed in March of 2020 and the prescription completed July 2020. And here are a couple maps, uh, one showing uh, the approximate location of the project area and the other a more detailed stand map. Right here we're standing on the northern side of Route 2A, right near the headquarters building. Um, in the background you can see the red pine, the crowns are starting to fail a bit. Uh, there, I do suspect that red pine scale has infested this plantation, it's po been positively identified about four or five hundred feet north of here uh, on the northern side of Route 2. Um, in the foreground here is a weather station used by our district fire warden to collect weather data. Uh, this weather data is used to forecast and predict and monitor fire weather conditions throughout the region. Uh, one of the biggest goals and objectives of this uh, forest management project is to try to mitigate safety hazards that are going to be uh, coming to light once all these red pines overstory starts to die. These trees uh, are currently posing a risk to falling and striking uh, several pieces of infrastructure including this weather station. Here we are standing on the very edge of the red pine stand. You can see clearly that there are uh, perfect rows of planted uh, white pine and red pine. It looks like they did an intermittent mix of red, white, red, white. Um, the red pine seemed to do a little bit better uh, than the white overall in terms of uh, reaching the overstory and dominating the canopy. Uh, there has been harvest here in the past, both in the 80s and the 90s, and we're coming back this time around to do the uh, overstory removal, which is the third and final stage of a three-stage shelterwood harvest. Again, all the trees painted in blue are marked for removal. Here I'm standing in the uh, red pine stand just north of the edge of Route 2A. Uh, typically in our forest management project, we'll maintain a certain level of aesthetic buffer along main roads and uh, public rights of way. This here, we're hoping to get an exemption from the DCR Service Forestry in regards to this area in particular with the uh, idea that the majority of these trees will all be dead within the next couple years and pose significant risk to passerbys along the roadway along with the power line and utilities that are running along the north side of Route 2A. As I pan through here, you'll notice that the large majority, if not all of the overstory trees are marked for removal. Um, we tried to maintain as many of the small diameter stems that will not pose significant risk in the immediate future to the roadway. And there will be some cover left here once we are complete. These two larger white pine trees with orange flagging have been uh, marked for retention. These trees will not be cut during harvesting operations and will remain on site. Uh, we try to maintain a minimum of four to six on average trees per acre across the entire timber sale with the exception of one and a half tree lengths away from any structure or infrastructure being roads, buildings, weather station, power lines, etc. Some cultural features have been identified out here on the site uh, during our internal review process uh, through DCR archaeology. It came evident, it became evident that uh, there were some cultural resources that needed to be worked in and around and uh, you're looking at an example of one right here is an old cellar hole. Uh, the archaeologist gave me approximate date of possibly early 1800s for establishment of this cellar hole. Um, we do have trees marked right up to the edge of it. Uh, we are going to be working closely with the archaeologist and the BMP document regarding work in and around cultural resources. The idea here is to remove the trees as close to grade as possible. Uh, while maintaining a certain distance from the edge of the foundation with the machines. Generally what happens with some of these bigger trees along the edge of these foundations is that the roots penetrate through the rocks and can, can dislodge them and eventually knock them down. So we're hoping to prevent some of that by removing some of the close proximity, larger diameter trees. In front of me here is an example of a standing dead red pine snag. I expect over the course of the next two years for the majority, if not all of the remaining live red pine on this site, 
to succumb to stressors associated with the red pine scale and be completely dead and pose hazardous conditions for both infrastructure within close proximity as well as uh, people who may be recreating out here for any, one reason or another. So right here in front of us is a tangled mess of uh, invasive species, glossy buckthorn. Uh, it is prevalent throughout this southern and eastern portion of the stand. We will be implementing some level of control uh, measures in order to hopefully get a handle on it. Regeneration is present throughout the site and varies from here to there uh, depending on canopy openings. Uh, total estimates were about 2,000 stems per acre across all species. White pine dominated the count with about 1,200 stems per acre in a size class between one and four inch or five inch diameter. Uh, you can also see in this shot here, there's a couple of retention trees, a white pine and a couple of red pines. These red pine retention trees are expected to be killed by the red pine scale and uh, will stay here as, and act as wildlife trees and maintain a certain level of uh, vertical structure. A lot of the regeneration present here today is a result of the uh, forest management activities that happened back in the 80s and 90s, uh, allowing for the regeneration to be established in the understory. Uh, in front of us here is a area where the canopy has failed and it left a little bit of an opening. There is a little bit higher density in regards to the regeneration in and throughout there. And obviously the regeneration that was present has been released and has topped off and grown over some of the regeneration that's currently under the canopy of the red pine. This triple striped yellow tree is the uh, heart timber harvest boundary. Just beyond that tree is property owned by the Mass Department of Transportation. We will not be going beyond any of these triples or onto the Mass DOT land for any reason. This small roadway here is an example of an old skid trail. Uh, this was a skid trail that was used back in 95 at the previous cut. Uh, it heads right down to the landing area where those trucks are parked. Uh, currently the DCR district fire warden is, has been storing federal surplus equipment here that's distributed throughout the state uh, to aid in municipal fire control as well as uh, some of its repurposed for state use. Uh, a lot of this machinery will be temporarily moved off site for when active management happens.